All right, my name is Dwayne Gerald Davis Sr. Everybody call me Shorty. I'm a prisoner's right advocate. I've been a prisoner's right advocate since 3386. All right, this ain't my first day on the block. I've been uh, exposing corruption in the judicial system since uh, Oliver North and Iran Contra scandals. Now you call it the Fast and the Furious. I'm holding Governor O'Malley and uh, Governor O'Malley, Bernstein, Schellenberger, and Chief of Police uh, in federal court. And if you look me up, it's Dwayne G. Davis versus the United States of America. They locked me up just like they did MacArthur for documenting and making a movie about Governor O'Malley and the play-to-play -play politics. Here's a booklet and a pamphlet you can pass around. It has all the information in it. The other pamphlet and talks about James MacArthur. And what me and James MacArthur were doing, we were doing radio broadcasts in front of City Hall, talking about Governor O'Malley, talking about Sheila Dixon, talking about the play-to-play -play politics in the prison industry, because they want to build a new prison and incarcerate us. So I got a nonprofit program, and it's called Shorties, and it's been doing this, and it's police and the police. I got the idea of the toilet because my son was murdered in Chicago in 2006. Governor O'Malley approved a program against guns, gangs, and murder and death in 2006, six days before my son was murdered. And since this program was policing the police and dealing with Maryland's zero tolerance, it directly went in court in the conflict to what he was doing. His thing was about locking up people. Mine was about keeping them out of jail and giving them education and jobs, all right? By doing this, it made me a political prisoner because it went in direct conflict to his politics. I named dirty cops, judges, and lawyers because I'm a caterer. I work in everybody's house. I work in everybody's house. So in this pamphlet that I gave Brother Body, no, this pamphlet right here, it names judges, lawyers, and it names the people that are involved in this case. This is a writ to dismiss my case in federal court because they don't want this held up. They had did a Sandusky case and they did all these uh, other cases, but they don't want this case in the public eye. You've never heard about the case or anything. It's documented, all right? And the case directly deals with the incarceration in the prison industry in America. In most major blacks, in most major cities where it's a high density of black population, it's a democratic society running it. Democrats is running it. But the prison industry was created by the Republicans. The Democrats ain't nothing but plantation owners. We traded cotton for cocaine in the penitentiary for the plantation, and the underclass is the cash crop. No different than bringing us in here in slavery. Now, the way that the Muslim community fits in, excuse my French, y'all are new niggas in America. It ain't no other way of putting it. <laughs> it ain't no other way of putting it. Y'all are new niggas in America. Y'all, y'all, y'all are the new whipping boys. And it's just that simple. And the way that America works is they want the blacks to be against the Muslims and they want the blacks to be against the Hispanics. But in all reality, we all in this together. At the end of the day, if we all locked up in the jail, we all sh shaking the same bars and we all using the same toilet, all right? And the bottom line is if we don't raise up and rise up, they're going to keep treating us like poo-poo. So if we don't change what they do do, we got to flip the script. I'm not a, a big Bible person, but it's the thing in the Bible say the last shall be first and the first shall be last. And I just took it into a ghetto version to say, I'm going to change, excuse my French, I'm going to change sugar to shit and shit to sugar. And I'm going to have fun doing it. And the way you do it is you hold your public officials accountable. You got a numerator and a denominator. The denominator is the people. The numerator is the elected officials. And now they flip the equation, and they think that they're more important than the people that they were, that were elected by. So if we don't start holding our officials accountable, like Governor O'Malley and the police departments accountable, then we're going to get what they gave us in the 50s and the 60s. We're going to get Bull Connors and Wallace. We're going to get Jim Crow and black codes. We're going to get Zionism, and that's all it is. Zionism is no other form of black codes and Jim Crow justice. It's just put in a religious manner and used in a religious manner. That's what Zionism is to me. Now, me and Mac MacArthur had did a broadcast in November. Seven days after me and MacArthur did the broadcast, Governor O'Malley had MacArthur locked up because we was doing live radio broadcasts. 
and our live radio broadcasts were going overseas. We had people outside of America looking at a democracy. So how can you promote democracy over in Pakistan, over in Syria, in Iran, when you're denying democracy here to the African Americans that are born and raised here? You're putting up a facade and you're promoting democracy and it ain't nothing but hypocrisy, period. Um, there was a man named Matthew Van Dyke that was locked up in Syria, not Syria, but uh, Liberia, uh, Le uh, Liberia, where, when Gaddafi was, where Gaddafi was at? Libya. Libya. And he was an American journalist, but he lost his journalistic powers when he picked up a gun. He became a, a enemy combatant by their laws, correct? If you pick up a gun in a fight, then that means that you're part of the fight. You lost your conscientious observership when you picked up that gun, when you put the camera down and you picked the gun up. All right? Now they're hailing Matthew Van Dyke as a political prisoner and they're hailing him over, you know, giving him all the hoopla. But you got James MacArthur locked up in American jail for videotaping the police when they beating people up, when they killing people, and when they doing corruption and dirty, dirty deeds. You sit here and Back in the 40s and the 50s, you used to lynch black people. But you want black people to forget about lynching, but you want to hail the Holocaust. And you can't do that. We deserve the same acknowledgement to not forget how the oppressors oppressed us and kept us oppressed through fear and intimidation. And that's no different what you're doing with Zionism, through fear and intimidation, through drones. Drones is just high-powered looses. You hang in the whole community instead of one, and you instill in fear in the whole community with those drones or the fear of a drone coming through your neighborhood. They bombed a block in Philadelphia. Move. Move. So they will blow you up in America. They have done it to black people. They have done it in America, and they didn't use a drone. They just pushed the button, all right? So if we're gonna make change, blacks, Hispanics, and the Muslim and Islamic community need to band together and start making that change. We got to start in our communities and we got to start by holding our elected officials accountable and telling them that we're not going to keep accepting what they're putting on our plate. Because if you keep accepting what they're doing, they're going to keep doing it to you. You treat a dog like a dog for a reason. A dog is obedient because you just give him just enough to feed him, just enough to whatever, and that dog going to be obedient and, and to you. Dog will kill for you. but I'm not a dog, I'm a man. And we are all men and women, human beings here. And we're not supposed to accept being treated like dogs. So my contribution to you is my camera. I can put this camera in anybody's face and they know I am not scared of them. This is, this is America's biggest weakness. The Achilles heel is a camera. The way that they use it on you every day, flip mode is a record label, make it your lifestyle. Flip that camera on them and hold them accountable. Put it in their face, ask them questions, and make them answer. And don't take uh, 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 uh for an answer. Keep asking questions the same way that they do you, or would you. When they come in your communities, they tell you negative stories about so-and-so got killed, so-and-so got robbed, so-and-so got raped. But they didn't tell you that we got a cancer victim over here that we doing something for, or we got a, 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 a garden that we building over here, or we got a son that we buried that we tried to send to college this year. 2013, we're about saving lives. We ain't about dying in America. And we dying out here religiously. We dying every day, like you say prayers. In Chicago, we got more murders and deaths than we got days in the year. And it's happening here. So anything that I can do with y'all, I'm going to do with y'all. But I'm a lone wolf. I'm not going to wait for people to act. I'm going to act out. Now, this information I got here, I got a nonprofit. Since the last time we met, 